We have one more card to bridge the performance gap between the 4070 and the 4080. The RTX 4070 Ti Super, which did make some uh, bold claim saying that not only it would be cheaper than its 4070 Ti predecessor, but uh, will also be quite more powerful as well, which as we will see all along this review is nothing much more than just a claim. Today, we are reviewing the RTX 4070 Ti Super Ventures 3 XOC from MSI, a graphics card which did promise that gentle, sensual touch, only to find yourself on a Syrian filled clinic scheduled for a hummus flavored colonoscopy. <laughs> ah, that moment when the doctor dazes into your eyes only to whisper, shh. Learn to like it. So the Ventus is MSI more affordable family of graphics card. Not that they are automatically affordable. They are very expensive Ventus, but the money you will be paying will be more focused onto the technology itself and a bit less on the you know options, the RGBs, the whistle and bells that old manufacturers like to add on to their products these days, which is kind of refreshing because it does propose a very focused product as a consequence. Now, starting with the obvious, the Ventus RTX 4070 Ti Super is, well, bigger and heavier than its 4070 Super variant, which I did review a couple of weeks ago and you should be checking out if you haven't done so yet, but it does remain one of the most compact Ti Super out there. Nevertheless, especially if you compare it to its next step up, the massive RTX 4080, which swallows it completely on all sides and measures. Now, the design remains very sober, no RGB, and the housing is made of a rather okay quality plastic, but to be honest, not a night candy for sure. The PCB remains a very sturdy 8-layered PCB board, which is a must when you deal with that many power-centric components on such reduced real estate and in order to avoid obvious PCIe 4.0 signal bleeding. Now, most importantly, it is powered by the NVIDIA very catchy name 103-275i, which bumps the total number of transistors from 35.8 billion to 45.9 big jump and which is exactly the same number of transistors found on the RTX 4080, which makes it obvious that we're dealing with nothing less than the 4080 die. Processing wise, we go from 7680 CUDA cores to 8448. From 240 tensor cores, we now have 264. And from 60 ray tracing cores, we now have 66. But most importantly, we go from 80 to 96 ROPs, which means more parallel processes, more rendering output, a much greater computer bandwidth overall, at least on paper, because you'll see. It doesn't stop there since the memory itself has seen a sizable upgrade, going from 12 to 16 gigabytes of DDR6. Great. Now, it is powered by a rather minimal power solution, providing about 550 amps worth of juice, 450 of which is GPU centric. That, that's about enough to get the full base potential of the 103-275 die, but definitely not designed to push it out of its boundaries. As expected, and unsurprisingly, the RTX 4070 Ti Super is nothing more than a watered down RTX 4080. And I'm not even sure that on paper watered down is the right word. It's so freakingly close to its specs. But unfortunately, and as you're gonna see next, that's where the similarities between those two cards ends. Now to get a real life idea of what this graphic card can output, I have chosen three very different graphical engines to represent about every style of gaming out there. Our fast paced FPS centric Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, the rich environment hybrid game experience that is Cyberpunk 2077, and the most demanding engine out there I have found so far, Alan Wake 2. Unsurprisingly, the 4070 Ti Super Ventus caps the frame rate at 250 frames per second in DLSS, 
with or without ray tracing in 1K. The 2K keeps a very close rendering at almost 200 FPS and 4K is very playable with very little latency and an average well above 100 frames per second. You will notice that the ray tracing mode has little impact on the overall game performances, which makes sense since Modern Warfare 3 did its best to reduce its ray traced elements to preserve a high frames per second gameplay. Cyberpunk 2077 gives more work to the card and the 1K mode is a beautiful experience, but ray tracing will cut in half your FPS. In 2K mode, DLSS 3.0 shows all of its value, giving up to four times more frames when played and literally saving your gaming experience. And as 4K goes, well, unless you turn ray tracing off, there is not much enjoyment there. Now, going to the fearless North Light engine, Alan Wake 2 is only playable in 1 or 2K with limited ray tracing and full DLSS support. But if you dare going in a full 4K resolution, no upscaling, your card will show its true limitations and you can find yourself in a single digit FPS count pretty ugly. In a wider context, things take a tragic turn for the RTX 4070 Ti Super, because despite its specs bump, it barely manages to clear the 4070 Ti FPS count, and this is weird, this is strange, and it begs the question, why? I might have found a beginning of an explanation which I will lay off, uh, or lay out, or lay down, uh, into the conclusion. Now, production-wise, similar results. The card stays way too close to the RTX 4070 Ti scoring and bridges very little of the RTX 4080 performance gap. I mean, it does provide some uh, marginal higher scoring in, in some cases, but overall, we are in the RTX 4070 Ti territory and far, far from the RTX 4080. It's really not great. On the other hand, thermal-wise, well, things are not so ugly. We can count on MSI experience in the domain. We are dealing with a rather large and thick interlaced thin array radiator. The central die plate is relieved by no less than six 8mm wide copper pipes spidering the air all around our radiator homogeneously work of wonder. The gathered heat is powerfully exhausted out by our three 95mm wide ball bearing Ventus fans which can brass or brace or brass a ton of air. Results are a showcase of what a simple yet efficient GPU cooling solution should be like. After an hour torturous synthetic stress test, our card shows no will to go anywhere above 60 degrees Celsius on its back PCB, which is where you know all the heat gathers, which at least will ensure and guarantee a very long lifespan for this Ventus card. Now, in conclusion, manufacturing-wise, well, MSI did a very decent job delivering a very close to optimal 4070 Ti Super experience while staying on the lower end of the competition pricing. And as in all Ventus, the VRM is not the most powerful there is, but does a better job than seen on the Ventus 4070 Super at staying close to its more expensive competition performance output. The build, despite being a little too plasticky to my taste and having a rather dated angular design, stays sturdy and manages to deliver a sense of solidity. And, and the highlight for me is a thermal solution which is simply the best of its class and clearly MSI knows what it's doing. Where the real problem lies here, and, and that applies to all of the RTX 4070 Ti Super, is that it is pressed way too close to the RTX 4080 Super. All that for a card that barely manages to give us performances only marginally faster than an RTX 4070 Ti. I mean, there's no sugarcoating this thing. Despite MSI's best efforts, the heart of this card is absolutely unsellable. And the more I'm looking at the specs of the TI Super and the AT, I start to realize that there is no good reason for the TI Super not to output performances much closer to the 4080 than what we've seen today. And I'm starting to wonder if it's not, you know, a bias issue or anything like that. Like, not, not so much a bias from the manufacturer, but the NVIDIA drivers itself. So I'm just throwing this out there because it really doesn't make sense. Specs are way too close between those two cards for the 70 Ti, sorry, for the yeah Ti Super to remain on Ti territory. That, that doesn't make sense at all for me. So who knows, maybe something will change. But until then, 
there is no version of this universe where you'd find me suggesting you to buy a 4070 Ti Super despite MSI best manufacturing efforts, which I find rather commending. But for my money, well, I'd save some cash and buy myself a 4070 Ti because that's what I'm getting anyways. And if I'm ready to spend what it costs to get a TI Super, I'll go with the RTX 1480, very simply, because they are actually going at the same price. So doesn't make me happy to say this, but please, please stay away from this card.